Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model. Today I'll be doing a review on a JC Wing Vintage Qantas Boeing 747-300 in their Lalanji Dreaming Livery Scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Troy's Toys which is based out of Olin Park, Kansas and its website is www.troystoysinc.com. First, allow me to share with you some information about the history of Qantas if you would please. Qantas was founded on November 16, 1920 in Winton, Queensland and commenced operations the following year in 1921 and the airline's first aircraft was an Avro 504K. Qantas is currently the third oldest operating airline in the world based on foundation date after KLM Royal Dutch Airlines and Avianca respectively and still continues to operate under the same name today as it was when the airline was formed on November 16, 1920. The Qantas name comes from Qantas, an acronym for its original name which stands for Queensland and Northern Territory Aerial Services. Qantas also has another nickname that the airline calls itself, the Flying Kangaroo. Qantas is the national flag carrier of Australia and the country's largest airline based on fleet size, international flights, and international destinations served. The headquarters of Qantas is located at the Qantas Center, which is located in the city of Botany Bay, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, while the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport, which is located approximately five miles south of the city center in the suburb of Muscat in Sydney, Australia. The airline also operates hubs from Brisbane Airport, located in Brisbane, Australia, and Melbourne Airport located in Telemarine, Melbourne, Australia. The airline's secondary hubs are located at Adelaide Airport located in Adelaide, South Australia, Dubai International Airport located in Dubai United Arab Emirates, and Perth Airport located in Perth, Western Australia. And the airline's focus cities are located at Carnes International Airport located in Carnes, Queensland, Australia, Darwin International Airport located in Darwin, Northern Territory, Australia, and Los Angeles International Airport located in Los Angeles, California. Qantas flies to 20 domestic destinations and 21 international destinations in 14 countries across six inhabited continents, as Qantas is one of 11 airlines to own this distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, Air France, British Airways, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, and South African Airways respectively with the operating fleet of 122 aircraft which consists of 18 Airbus A330-200s, 10 Airbus A330-300s, 12 Airbus A380-800s, 72 Boeing 737-800s, 4 Boeing 747-400s, and those are scheduled to be phased out by 2020, and 6 Boeing 747-400ERs, extended range versions. And in addition to the 122 aircraft that are currently operating in the Qantas fleet, Qantas also has unfulfilled orders for an additional 8 aircraft, which includes 8 Boeing 787 9 stretch streamliners, in which Qantas is scheduled to receive their very first one on October 17, 2017. And also as of September 2017, or at the time of this video review posting, Qantas currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for Qantas is 38. Now let's check out the front of the box you see here. You see the uh, nice little Lalanji Dreaming livery scheme. I'll go into details in that. Very impressive. See the, uh, the turtle, the fish, the plants, the water, and all the other beautiful nice little color there and then you see the Qantas logo there and then you see the aircraft type and you see the Qantas title and then you see the model information right there at the lower part of the box all right now you're looking at the back of the box nothing much back there except the warning information all right all right now you're looking at the top of the box you see here you see the aircraft type the computer generated picture of the aircraft the Qantas title and its logo the model scale information as well as the registration ship number I'll go into details and all that later on in review stay tuned for that part now you're looking at the bottom of the box the same information at the top you see the aircraft type the middle part of the lower part of the box the computer generated picture of the aircraft and then you see the Qantas titles and their logo and the model scale information and that's the item number and where that barcode is okay 
all right now you're looking at this nice little prestigious model stand that came with the model what have you and now you see that black pad right there folks right here that means when you put your model on the stand it'll prevent the model from being damaged and scratched from loss of paint what have you and then you come down here you see the nice little plaque here some jc wynn's been doing since 2013 you see the Qantas titles and their logo the type of the aircraft 747 300 and the scale information 1 200 okay okay now this little plastic bag you see here folks with all this stuff in here these are the gear replacement doors you also see two little toothpicks in there please stay tuned as i go into detail for the purpose of these uh gear replacement doors for this model okay all right with all that information out of the way about the history of Qantas, all the details here on this boxing you see here the nice little model stand as well as the gear replacements inside this package a uh, little pa plastic package right there with no further ado here is the model everyone all right there it is the jc wing ventures Qantas Boeing 747-300 in their lalangi dreaming livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. First, allow me to share you some information about the Qantas Boeing 747-300 as you see here. Qantas became one of 20 airlines respectively to acquire Boeing's fifth Boeing 747 variant, the Boeing 747-300 into their fleet after the Sydney-based airline decided to place an order for six of these iconic jetliners on November 18, 1983 and receive their very first Boeing 747-300 jetliner that bared the registration ship number VH-EBT one year later on November 13, 1984 and receive their sixth and final Boeing 747-300 jetliner that bears the registration ship number VH-EBY on May 1st, 1987 and after serving the Qantas fleet for over 24 years as one of the airline's official flagship jetliners with a total flying time of 524,000 hours between the six of them during its peak Qantas operated its last revenue scheduled Boeing 747-300 service flight on December 29, 2008 when it flew from Melbourne, Australia to Los Angeles, California via by way of Auckland, New Zealand. As Qantas officially retired the Boeing 747-300 jetliner from its fleet on January 21, 2009 as this aircraft was ultimately replaced with the Boeing 747-400. The Boeing 747-400ER extended range version and the Airbus A380-800 aircraft. Now let's talk about this nice little livery here, the Lalange Dreaming livery. This was actually the second Qantas aircraft to be painted in an Aboriginal livery after a Boeing 747-400, which bears the registration ship number VH-OJB, was actually painted in another Aboriginal livery that was actually called the Wulala Dreaming Livery, which was unveiled in 1994. The livery that's actually displayed on this aircraft, as you can see, is actually called the Lalangi Dreaming Livery Scheme, as this aircraft was painted in this particular unique livery scheme on October 19, 1995, and was unveiled to the general public for the first time on November 14, 1995, at a ceremony that was held on the grounds of the Carrier's Hub at Kingsford Smith Airport in Sydney, Australia, prior to celebrating the airline's 75th anniversary two days later which was on november 16th of that same year the Lange dreaming also symbolizes a celebration of the balance and nature in our place australia that's also inspired by the country's ancient cultural tradition that dates back 40,000 years as the contemporary artwork of the Lange dreaming also reflects the lush color palette of tropical australia as the word Lange is the aboriginal word which means our place the Lalangi dreaming livery was created and designed by the australian design company G design studios that was established by the founders john and ross mariotti whose global headquarters is located in sydney australia now you got the information about the aircraft and the nice little livery how this came about let's get down to the nitty-gritty and let me show you all the details on the rest of this aircraft now shall we let's check it out Okay, we're going to start on the left slash port side of the aircraft here. We see the nose gears right here, the nose gear struts featuring the nose gear lights. I'll show you a better view of those later on in the review. You see the uh, nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there, BU. 
uh, no static ports and Peter tools, but anyway, this little name right here, the Lange Dreaming title, you see at the part of this aircraft right here. This is the name of the aircraft and the indigenous livery on this aircraft. Man, I like it. You see the little fish there, the plants. The blue part's got to represent the water. The green's got the green and the blue's got to represent the landscape, and the red and orange got to represent the sun. All right. And then now you see the One World logo displayed by the L1 door right here. But I'm gonna bring it up closer. All right, so you can check it out even better. Check it out. Okay, this is about the best I can do because it might blur up the vision. But anyway, you see the Qantas tower right here, and then the One World logo right here by the L1 door. Qantas joined the One World Alliance along with American Airlines, British Airways, and Cathay Pacific as one of the four founding members on February 1st, 1999, which consists of 15 airline members from six inhabited continents. All right? That's that logo right there. Okay? You can barely see it, but you get close enough, you'll see it. It's there, though. All right? Okay. Now, on the edge of the wings here, you got a, a better visual view of the inboard landing lights. Very detailed there. The light they own, but they also shine in here. Very detailed and impressive. Now, I'm definitely feeling these engines here. Very shiny and everything. Now, these engines you're looking at here on the port side, these are the Rolls-Royce RB211-524D4 engine that we'll use on this particular Qantas Boeing 747-300 jetliner. You also see the Rolls-Royce logo here on, on the column here, there, as well as there. Now, I'm gonna turn this aircraft uh, model around that you see the turbo fan blades and they do spin higher there are no engine cones here but that's the back of the engines there as well as there there awesome check it out okay now you're looking at both engines the front view of both engines no engine strike but the turbo fan blades do spin which is good enough for me there as well as over here perfect and then you can add the bogey gears here on the port side along with the bogey gear struts as well as the bogey gear door there as well and you got a, another side, uh, front view of the uh, any clips and uh, uh, the lights here on the edge of the wing there all right okay now you're looking at the engine on the starboard side no engine strikes but the turbo fan blade spin over here as well check it out great great and then you see the inboard landing lights right here on the wing here on this side on the starboard side as well as the bogey gear and the bogey gear strut and the door there now however the bogey gear on this side the starboard side is kind of off it's it's, it's it's not even on the uh the board there no i don't know if anybody else had a problem with that issue there i think major hd said he had that same issue as well but anyway it's all good Okay, now you look at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the nose cone. And now you got a better view of the nose gears, the nose gear struts featuring the nose gear lights right there, very detailed, right there inside the nose gear door. And then there's the uh, nose cone right there. So with that said, I'm going to take it back to the uh, port side because they have more information to share with you over there as well. Let's roll. Okay, now let's talk about the Qantas load that's displayed here on these engines, here, as well as here, as well as the tail. Check it out. There. This is the logo for Qantas, which resembles that of a kangaroo, which was introduced in 1944 and was remodified again in 1984, as the 1984 updated logo was conceived by Tony Lund of Lund Design Group, whose global headquarters is located in Sydney, Australia. Now behind these uh, Rolls Royce engines right here, you got a better visual view of the uh, bogey gears here on the port side. The bogey gear struts, the bogey gear door there as well. And then you got the center bogey gear right here as well. Very impressive. And then there's the center bogey gear on the starboard side. I'll show you on a different angle later on that part, okay? Now let's talk about the, uh, the antenna on this wing tip right here. Okay, that the little, little wingtip device is sticking out. Now these wingtip devices are actually called high frequency antennas. And prior to the Boeing 747-400 variant, from the 747-100s to the 747-300s, including this one, 
These high frequency antennas were installed on the wingtip of the aircraft and the purpose of these high frequency antennas were for radio and communication from the aircraft. You also see the red navigation light right there by the edge of the wing there as well. And now you're looking at the registration ship number VH-EBU uh, in front underneath the windows here on this nice little Melange Dream and livery scheme on here. Registration ship number VH-EBU. This was the second of six Boeing 747-300 jetliners as well as the 26 Boeing 747 jetliner respectively to enter the Qantas fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on December 21, 1984 and was delivered to Qantas on January 24, 1985. However, this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from the Qantas fleet on February 1, 2005 and was ferried to Melbourne Avalon Airport in Avalon, Victoria, Australia where this aircraft is currently stored up as of 2017. Now this little right here, Blaringy, that's the, uh, the consultancy firm uh, uh, John and Ross Mariotti, that's the firm that designed this aircraft, that's the Sigma there, all right? And then you see the, uh, the Australian flag decal above the L5 door right here yeah right here this flag decal represents the country where Qantas currently operates from as the national flag carrier for the country of Australia now looking at the back of the aircraft here we see the Qantas logo I mentioned earlier as well as the partial registration ship number here on the edge of the tail here and you also see the partial kangaroo logo in the Lalanji Dreamer right there how it's blended together very unique impressive all right now you're looking at the uh, APU exhaust hole right there. I'll get this focus here a little bit. Okay, there you go. The APU exhaust hole right here. Then there's the strobe light right there. Strobe right right there underneath the APU exhaust hole right here. Okay. Now you're looking at the APU ex uh, Zillary, uh power unit exhaust hole right here, as well as the strobe light right there as well as the rear view angle of this entire aircraft. Check it out. There it is, okay? Okay, now you're looking at this aircraft from the starboard side. So we're gonna start at the front first. You see the nose gears right here, the nose gear struts, the nose gear lights, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there, BU, the nose cone, the uh, windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the Qantas titles, as well as the front cargo container door. And you see the inboard landing lights right here on the starboard side. Along with this nice little Lalanji Dream livery here. You also see a turtle. You see the fish. You see that's got to represent the water, the green, and all the other colors. It's got to represent the landscape and the sun. All right. Okay. Now you're looking at the Rolls Royce. RB211524 D engines here on the starboard side. You also see the Rolls Royce logo here as well as the Rolls Royce logo there. You also see the Qantas logo here on the edge of the engine as well as the engine there as well. Now you're looking at the high frequency antenna here on the edge of the uh, wingtip as well as the green navigation light you see there. Okay, now you're looking at the bogey gears on the starboard side as I mentioned earlier. And I'm the only one who had a problem with this issue where this gear didn't really touch on the uh, touch on the uh, board, what have you. But anyway, that's the only uh, downside I see with this model here. But other than that, it's all good. See the, uh, the bogey gear struts as well as the bogey gear door. And you also see the uh, center bogey gears here on the side here as well, featuring the bogey gear struts and the doors there as well. Okay, now you look at the back of the aircraft here on this Lalanji Dream livery scheme here. You see that the rear cargo container door, the FT bulk bin door, the Australian flag decal, the registration ship number. You also see the turtle, you also see the flowers and all that would have you, as well as the, King, the Qantas logo on the red tail as well. Check it out. There. And you also see the partial registration ship number up there on the edge of the tail on the, on the starboard side there as well. All right. All right. Before I show you this, uh, aircraft model from the bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in full detail i'm gonna allow you to see one feature which is the rolling gears which rolls pretty good it tilts 
and the nose gear swivels as well as you see there impressive so with that said allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, all right check it out okay we're gonna start at the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft you know you see the nose cone how it's painted in green the windshield wipers the cockpit windows the pilot escape hatch door you see the anti-collision beacon light right here on this distinctive pump right here with all this little stuff on here another high frequency antenna there okay see another high frequency antenna there right there by that flower right there and there's a the little fish there there's the satellite communications box or the Wi-Fi box well it's satellite communication they didn't have Wi-Fi on the plane back then see a nice little artwork on this aircraft impressive there's the uh, tail and now you see these two little dots here on the edge of the uh, horizontal stabilizer as well as over here those are the luminary lights that lit up this tail here when it flew during nighttime. Okay, now let's check out the wings. No wing walkway, but you got the flat slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. You see the engines there, the Rolls Royce RB211 engines right there, shiny in effect. See the uh, fuel dump valve right here, as well as the high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing right there. Now let's check out this side. No wing walkway, but you got the flat slats, get around, and spoilers, what have you on this side, as well as the engines right there, as well as the fuel dump valve right here, and as well as the high frequency antenna on this side there as well. Now, you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft, how it's painted in the laundry dreaming colors on here as well. See the nose cone, how it's painted in, uh, look like turquoise, what have you. See the closed nose gear door, as well as the open nose gear door with the partial registration ship number on there, BU, as well as the nose gear. Then you see the nice little artwork here. And then right there closely, there's the anti collision beacon light right there. There's the hole where the stand goes in at. Those are the center bogey gears here. And my guess is they do tilt. Start here, yeah. That's a little challenge there, but anyway, it's all good. See the nice little artwork here. Another high frequency antenna there. You see the pressure relief valves. Another high antenna. And there's the Zellware power unit housing doors right there. So. And then let's check the gears over here. Okay, perfect. See the uh, engines here, very shiny right there, impressive. Shiny right there. The registration ship number there. The fuel dump valve and the high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing tip. Same over here, folks. Yeah, a little challenge there, but it's all good. There's the engine there. The engine there, pretty impressive. The fuel dump valve right here, as well as the high frequency antenna on this side here as well. Very impressive. Okay, since I showed you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model and the undercarriage belly view, undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in detail, now I'm gonna put it on that nice little wooden stand there that I showed you earlier. So with no further ado, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. Okay, fine, got this model on the stand. It's not in the best position on there, but it's holding up to say the least. And it's this model from the uh, port side the shiny little engine there and the Lalonji dream livery very impressive now looking at the front of the uh, aircraft model from the front view angle with all the uh, engines intact the other gears intact there as well on this nice little wooden model stand customized stand there and looking at this model in the Lalonji dream and livery scheme from the starboard side featuring the nice little engines here very detailed there the, Quant the uh, Qantas logo right there you also see the Quantas right there in the background there as well with all that nice little delivery there impressive and finally looking at this model from the tail cam and you see the high frequency antennas over here as well as over there as well wow this is a beauty all right, before I take this model to stand completely, I got in this position for a reason. And the reason is, is the gears. I'm gonna go ahead and take the gears off. Start with the nose gear here first. 
it's retractable and detachable the bogey gear on the port side the bogey gear here on the starboard side and the center bogey gears I gotta take this model to stand here briefly hold up there retractable there there okay okay so with that said I'm let you see this model from a different angle here it is folks check it out okay now you're seeing this model in in flight mode now you got one or two uh, options from this point on option a is if you want to continue to display it like this with the model displayed in flight mode that's fine remember that little plastic bag I showed you earlier this right here that's the purpose of these gear replacements is to substitute your gears while you display your model in flight mode or you can do option number two like I do just keeping it and keep the gears on like you display it in takeoff landing position gears up gears down your choice however I choose to keep the gears on mine because uh, it adds more value to the model okay so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and take this model to stand and go ahead and wrap up this model information with the uh, seat configuration where to utilize this aircraft okay now let's check out the seating configuration on this aircraft, okay? The Qantas Boeing 747-300 jetliner seated 422 passengers in a two-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, folks, from rows one to five on the main deck, which is right from here to here. You have 22 business class seats, and then rows 11 to 19, upper deck, which will be from here to here. You have an additional 30 business class seats, which brings the total to 52 business class seats total. And rows 20 to 75, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 370 economy class seats, which brings the total to 422 seats. And finally, Qantas previously utilized their Boeing 747-300 jetliners to worldwide destinations from Sydney to Perth, Honolulu, Los Angeles via Honolulu, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Narita, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Manaus via Rio de Janeiro, Brazil and Singapore, and from Melbourne to Perth, Auckland and Los Angeles via Auckland, and from Perth to Sydney and Melbourne. Well folks, this concludes this model review. Please rate, subscribe, I like to know if you got this model, you plan on getting this model. Proud to tell you, they still have this model available on eBay. You can get it on there, snatch it up while you can, because it's probably about to disappear as we speak. It's become very hard to find as we speak, because most retailers are sold out of this model. And I have three more Qantas models to show you. The Airbus A330 and their Silver Rule livery, the 747 and the regular livery, and the 787-9. Their newest one, I'll show at a later date. I probably won't show that until after they find get their uh, first aircraft delivered, okay? So with that said, take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.